Hey guys, welcome to the show. And today we're going to take a break from all the modding stuff. And I kind of just want to talk about a few things, including a topic about kind of falling off the watch cliff, which is a video that Simon Crane made that kind of got me thinking about the same thing. So that's coming up right after this. Alright, so first thing, kind of before I get into everything else, I have started a Snapchat, which is CGAWC channel. Um, those of you that aren't on Snapchat or interested, you can go ahead and add me. I don't entirely know how to use it yet, but I'm learning. So what I'm thinking I'll probably do with that is, um, you know, snap a few mods that I'm that I'm doing for some CG watch fan members as I go. For those of you that might be interested in that kind of thing, again, my username on that is CG AWC channel, so you can check me out on there once I figure it out. But uh, one of the videos that that Simon made was kind of falling off the watch cliff, pulling off of watches for a little bit and and that kind of got me thinking because obviously there's the channel that, that revolves around watches and there's really just my own personal interest that revolves around uh, around watches Now I did a video a while back that kind of talked about phases and, and phases that I've gone through personally but I'm starting to think there's subcategories of phases in watch collecting as well I mean in the beginning you know it was kind of just about enjoying and acquiring all these pieces and then there was this sense of needing to move up the tiers which is something that I talked about in the evolution of a watch collector video um, and then there's kind of that enlightening period where you break through and realize hey I can enjoy everything and anything I want not just what they say uh, I should enjoy and then there's what I would call kind of my latest phase the watch modding thing where you kind of enjoy them so much aesthetically and reading about what's going on behind the dial where you kind of get to that point where okay I kind of want to get my hands into it and and see what I can put together myself. Simon's video in particular was how he's kind of like in a happy place with it with the collection that he has. He doesn't know how much more watch stuff he can you know do or talk about or if he'll end up adding something else down the line and it kind of made me wonder you know how many of you guys out there have kind of maybe been like really hot and heavy in, into the watch obsession and then whether or not you, you've noticed that you go through a cool off period where you're kind of like all right well not really doing the the watch thing anymore maybe you know you're still enjoying what you have but you're not constantly pursuing something new um, or if you're back in your phase now after having had a, a cool off period for for whatever period of time it just made me wonder so if any of you guys have experienced or noticed yourself going in and out of the watch phase uh, in particular I'd, I'd love to hear about that I don't really know kind of where I'm gonna land with it it's something that I've enjoyed for a really long time I am finding different categories and subcultures within you know watch collecting that I'm, I'm really having a fun time learning about and getting invested in um, I mean, there's so much time and effort invested into it. I think it, it'd be kind of sad uh, for that to come to an end, but then there's the excitement of what would replace it, right? Because with me, particularly, I get really into something, and then if there's something else that catches my interest, I get really invested in that. But there's always kind of something that's filling that hobby void for me, I guess, is really the, the only way to put it. When I have my own time, if I sit down and look at it, all that, everything that I'm doing is very watch centric. I'm recording a video for a watch channel, or I'm modding a watch, or I'm looking at watches, articles of watches, news articles uh, about watch related industry news. It gets to be consuming, not necessarily in a bad way because it's something that I enjoy. You know, like the watch modding thing, particularly. I've found like incredibly therapeutic and, and relaxing. Having a family with young kids, there's so much unpredictability in life. And with watches, I've kind of found like the accuracy, precision, and consistency to be something that's actually really relaxing, you know, in a weird way. Until you drop something or misplace something, then it <laughs> can get right back up to stressful again. But I'd be interested. To hear what you, what you guys think, if you think that watches or the love of watches or passion of watches is something that 
can continue to be something essentially lifelong. I hope that 10, 15 years from now, I love my watches as much as I love them now, particularly the JLC that I like scrounged for and, and obsessed for and saved so hard for. I think it'd be really sad if maybe like five or 10 or 15 years from now, it's just eh, another watch. Can't believe I spent all that money on it. I, I, I hope I don't end up thinking that, but I mean, to be perfectly honest, I, I, I don't I don't know what 10 to 15 years from now will hold. You know, so a little bit of a different video. I've got some, I've got family visiting, so I don't have a lot of recording time. I actually am kind of doing this video while everybody is out hunting for Pokemon. Uh, yes, not a big fan of gaming in general, but grateful to that game because it gave me long enough to make this video. So... Uh, yeah, I'd love to hear you guys' thoughts as it pertains to watch collecting particularly and what you've experienced over the time of your watch obsession. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And as always, if this is your first time here, don't forget to subscribe for more videos like this. That's it for this one. CG, out.